All right, fantastic. Awesome that all of you are here with us today. We're excited to have um, student panelists because really as we've gone down this uh, path of remote learning, it's really important to gather feedback from the kids. How is this going? What do you think? What ideas do you have about how this might be better? So we really appreciate all of you being here with us today. Um, before we begin, just a few uh, reminders. We do have everybody that um, is a participant um, in today's panel um, and in the field muted. Um, use the chat feature to post questions. Um, all of our student participants, if you put your cursor at the bottom of the screen and you see the chat box jump up. When we pose a question, if you want to answer, um, just put next right in that chat box so we know to call on you. Um, and that way we'll be able to stay organized and not kind of like talk over each other. So that should work pretty well. Um, there will be a recording of this. So we'll record um, the session and we'll be able to share that um, link with you. So if you have friends or family that wanna see um, this webinar and certainly other MASSP members, this link will be available. And um, panelists, we want this to be a dialogue. So um, if you've got a thought or you wanna add into what someone else has already said, like I mentioned, just put next and we'd be happy to call on you and then um, attendees that are here, if you want to ask a question of the panelists, we'll be able to take those at the end as well. Keep in mind that um, really as uh, districts are building remote learning plans, it's a really important to have this uh, voice, whether it's from students, parents, um, your teaching staff, um, and really all stakeholders in the community. So MASSP is offering our services to provide surveys and also to provide these type of dialogue sessions. So if someone's interested in MASSP facilitating conversations like this within your district, that is a service that we can provide. So what are we going to be doing today? What's our agenda? Um, we are really gonna be focused on student voice today. And um, as we get going, I'm going to introduce all of our panelists who are with us. And as we pose questions, we'll give the opportunity for all of the panelists to answer and have dialogue with us. And um, we'll just be able to kind of focus as we go on along. And then Steve and I will come in and draw some conclusions and kind of find those common threads. So you see a list of our panelists that are with us today. So guys, as I introduce you, if you give everybody a wave, that would be fantastic. We've got David from East China School District. There he is. We've got Parker from Chippewa Valley Schools. We've got Carly from Portage Public Schools. Emerson from East Lansing Public Schools. Abinaya from Rochester Community Schools. Caden, also from Rochester Community Schools. And we have Tyler from Anchor Bay School District. All right, so that's our esteemed panel. Um, we did supply these questions to our student panelists in advance to give them a little bit of an opportunity to get their thoughts going on these things. So I'm gonna turn it over to Steve, who's gonna go ahead and ask you the first question. So welcome and thanks for being here, everybody. Um, our assumption is this online learning is new to most of you as middle school or students. It was new to your building principals. It was new to your teachers. Um, and we figured out a lot of glitches on the way and, and some things that have been working. What were some of the things that you have appreciated most about this online learning opportunity and remote learning with uh, regard to either your teacher or what you've experienced uh, as yourself? Tyler, would you mind getting this kicked off? And then if you want to share, anybody else wants to share, put next over in that panelist view and we'll make sure that we call on you. So what have you appreciated most? Um, the one thing that I have enjoyed about it is that like the schedule is flexible and that you didn't have to do the work like right then and there. So you could kind of do your work whenever you wanted. Just you had to get it done by the next week. So I could like, if I didn't feel like doing it in the morning, I could just do it whenever during the day I wanted. And um, if you needed help and like understanding something, you could join like a video call with your teachers and all your classmates and get help on that like multiple times a week. So I enjoyed that. Thank you. Ab and I want to share some thoughts and then we'll go to Parker. Um, yeah. So the thing I liked the most was that all our teachers were kind of prepared. 
like I think like the week or the week after that online schooling um, started, they all had a plan of like what we were going to do and what the curriculum was going to be. And also, if we ever have questions, like we ask them in our Google Classroom, um, all my teachers have gotten back very quick. So it's never like something that you don't know what to do or how to do it, because they'll always get back to you. Thank you. Parker, what's on your mind? Um, I like how the fact that you don't have to do everything at the perfect time, like what Tyler said, but like, it's, if you want to do it with, like with a friend or something, like you guys can just get on FaceTime and then you can work together on your homework. So then you have like more of time to do like other things or like mess around with your friend or something. So it sounds like flexibility is key uh, when you can interact with your teacher, get feedback from your teacher and also work with your, your friends on the back scene sometimes around the assignments. Emerson, Richard, Carly, what are your thoughts? Go ahead, Carly, you can unmute yourself and then we'll go to Emerson. Um, well, I like that I don't have to start at um, 7.40. Um, I can like sleep in a little bit or start later if I wanted to. So it goes back to that flexibility again of making it work for you. I was hearing from some students based on their administrators and their teachers feedback that some kids were responding and parents were responding to them at like 1.30 in the morning. If anybody, any of you have done that yet? Or at 10 o'clock at night? So everybody has their own schedule. Emerson, what are you I thinking? Also, I also like the flexibility. I think it's really nice that you can do whatever you want on whatever day you want. Like, I don't have to do all of my classes in one day. I can do, like, social studies on Monday and then science on, I don't know, Friday if I wanted instead of cramming them all into one. Nice. So, again, that flexibility, join in. Marquita, what's on your mind? I agree with everybody else with what they're saying about flexibility. With, for most of my classes, most of the time we're posted at the start of the week and we'll do it at the end of the week, which helped out a lot with different uh, classes and all the workloads. Nice. So it sounds like some common things of workload flexibility. Do you see that with each of your teachers that you get that flexibility? Don't name teachers specifically, but are you seeing that you have that same flexibility with all teachers or is it some teachers? What's working with you for you as a student in that realm? There were about two or three teachers that really like emphasized on it, but that worked out seeing how I can just do it whenever and focus on other, the other teachers on certain days they assigned it. Thank you. Other thoughts from anyone else before Wendy poses another question for us? You can just go ahead and unmute yourself. You don't even have to put next on this one. So Tyler, I think um, you and I were talking about um, how some of your teachers, um, you wish that they would coordinate schedules a little bit because sometimes it seems like they give you a lot of work all at one time versus not. So can you explain a little bit about that and um, how it works uh, in your district? Yeah, um, pretty much it's the same like time schedule for everyone in my district. You don't have to get something done at a certain time. It's just you all have to get it done by the end of the week. But like some teachers understand that like we're getting a lot of work from the other classes, but some just like overload on work and don't think very much about the other classes and just give us like a lot of work for one class. Yeah. So that's probably an important maybe thing that uh, that we can learn is um, that all of your teachers, so um, you're in eighth grade. So if we have, you know, the math and English and um, all of your other teachers kind of comparing what the assignments are going to be for the week so you don't get overloaded. Anyone else have that problem on the panel? Just like raise your hand if you felt like some weeks that maybe it was worse than others. Yeah. Okay. Abhinaya, do you want to explain any more about that? Um, so for me, it's kind of a little bit different. So for us in Rochester um, school, we have a schedule that we do school on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And then we do like first and second hour Monday, third and fourth Wednesday, and fifth and sixth Friday. Um, but that's just a recommended schedule and not all our teachers follow that. So I have had times where like two teachers um, schedule Zooms at the same times. So mm -hmm. sometimes you have to like pick which one you think is more important to go to. And that might be hard because both classes have like the same amount of work. But I don't think that I've ever felt like we've had too much work. I feel like all the teachers 
um, have done like a good job like balancing it and like even on our Zooms, our teachers will like talk to us about how they know that like we're getting work from all the teachers, not just them. So I think that like all our teachers are doing a good job like balancing the workload. That's interesting about the Zoom conflict. So do they record those Zooms um, so that you could see it if, if you know, you did have that conflict? Um, no, none of my teachers have done that yet. Okay, so that might be another another thing, like a suggestion, if if we have to keep doing this in the fall, um, that that might be a, a way to kind of make sure that if there was a conflict, you'd still be able to watch it. And I would imagine that even if you watch it, sometimes you might want to go back and see it again, you know, if you'd forgotten something. So I think that might be a really good feature. Okay, Emerson. Interestingly, too, Wendy, I don't know if you've heard this or not, but some teachers were getting kind of down on themselves because some of the students weren't showing up. And that kind of explains perhaps why some students weren't showing up. They were in another, another Zoom meeting. Right, right. And the other person didn't even know that. So that's a great point. Okay, what were you going to say, Emerson? I think that my teachers do a really good job with balancing the work and that I don't really have a lot of work for all of the classes, but I have a lot of work combined for the, all of the classes, like if that makes sense. Yeah. But for like math, I don't have a bunch of work and social studies, I don't have a bunch of work and English and science, but together I have a lot of work. So it's very balanced. How does your schedule work? Tyler said that he gets all his assignments on Monday and has to get them done, you know, throughout the week. And Abinaya said it was more like, you know, a daily schedule. How, how, is, it, how is it working in uh, East Lansing with the schedule? For us, all of our teachers post the work in Google, Google Classroom at 8 a.m. on Mondays, and it's all due on Sunday. Okay, right. So you're similar to how Tyler's setup is. All right. How about you, Parker? What were you thinking? Our teachers are like, like they don't give you too much work or anything, but then sometimes they like, they like don't post anything and then they'll post it later in the week. So then sometimes they don't actually see it because I think that I completed all the work already. So then like, then I like, I'm rushing to finish it on Sunday night or something. So maybe another suggestion then for educators would be to have a consistent schedule. So if it's supposed to be posted on Sunday, then it should be all posted on Sunday so that you don't have that opportunity where maybe you miss something, right? Okay, what do you have, Carly? Um, well, my school's a little bit different, I guess, um, but like um, every day you have one or two subjects. Like um, on Mondays, I have math and art. Um, and then that's just due the next week on that day. Um, yeah. Yeah, so yours, your, everybody's, it sounds like we just have like slight differences in, in what that setup is, which there's nothing wrong with that. It's just interesting to kind of hear what those different, um, you know, opportunities are. So let's move on and kind of change our thinking a little bit. Um, what challenges or obstacles did remote learning create for you or for your family? So when we talk about something like this, um, you know, maybe in some cases, there weren't enough electronic devices in a household or bandwidth was a problem or things of that nature. So does anybody have something that was um, challenging or that was a, an obstacle you had to kind of overcome or figure out? Looks like David is ready. Uh, in my house, there's, like you said, not really enough like technology at some points because I have three siblings and two parents who are both working at home. It's where it can, it can be challenging sometimes, like if me and my sister have Zooms at the same time. What about even just a quiet place? Um, I know that there's two of us in my household, and a lot of times we're both on Zoom meetings, and our house isn't very large, so sometimes we can hear each other, and it just gets a little bit confusing sometimes, even with having like a quiet space to be able to, to be. That's, I think, probably another problem that people have. I think I saw Tyler um, put his hand up. What were you going to add? Yes, um, like some teachers like set up the didn't didn't set up assignments correctly. So like you had to do a bunch of work just to get the assignments done. Like the teachers who did it correctly, you would just be able to like click on it, type in your answers, and um, submit it. But, like some just wouldn't set it up right, and you had to um, go through stuff just to get the um, just to get 
the answer is done and um, it took up more time. So I've heard, I've heard that from quite a few um, students actually is that just submitting assignments can be challenging and maybe you've kind of worked that bug out. But um, I think something that you were trying to really get at Tyler is that if the teachers all posted their assignments in a consistent way, you know, so that you could submit easily, that would kind of make things a little more smooth also. All right, who else was, has a thought on this topic? Something that has been a challenge or an obstacle. I come back, uh, Evanaya, go ahead. Um, so for us, like I have one sister and then my parents also work Monday through Friday all day. And so for us, the Wi-Fi has been the biggest problem. Um, and often like during Zoom, I know that like Zooms take up a lot of Wi-Fi. So during the Zooms, the Wi-Fi would just go out and then we'd have to like catch up on what we missed. We'd have to re-enter the Zoom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How about just balancing your time? Does anyone have a hard time? You know, you get these assignments on Sunday or Monday and then you kind of have to figure out your week for yourself. Is uh, time management been a problem for anyone? David, do you want to share about that? Yeah, I get all my assignments like daily, and so it can it can be hard sometimes to find out like when to do my assignments when like the internet like won't be like all full of other people doing stuff, mm -hmm. and so it can be hard to like because all my stuff is online, mm -hmm. so it can be hard to know like when to do a Zoom meeting when everyone else is off the internet. Right. So navigating that. What about you, Tyler? Um, I mean, it's it's not much of a time hassle. It's just like, I don't know. I don't have much problem with time at all. It's just because I get all my assignments on like Sunday night and just I have pretty much a whole week to do them. So I just try to like pick a subject one day and do that whole subject. And so out of the week, I get all six subjects done pretty easily. It really so, sounds like you're all preparing yourselves for the college world around <laughs> time management and knowing how to handle assignments and different teachers. And so look forward to the future of what this might bring. There were two more over in the, the uh, chat that wanted to share. And it looked like it was Parker and Caden. So Parker, if you want to go, join on in, and then we'll go Caden after that. Parker. Part for me about doing the work is not like actually getting on and doing the work. It's like convincing myself to finish it all and do it all for the day and then do it all the next day. I think, I think Steve's example of this being similar to a college experience, I think what you just described is exactly right. It is. It's hard to find that sometimes that motivation to convince yourself that you need to do it. And so you know, maybe setting up a, a schedule, you know, is the way to go where, you know, you know, a lot of studies indicate that you're freshest in the morning. So whatever time you get up, I know I'm sure many of you aren't getting up at, you know, seven or eight, like you normally would for school. But whenever it is you get up, that's kind of your freshest time when you um, might be able to dedicate energy to it. Did we see another? What would you like to share? Um, like the other said, um, or doing the work and balancing the time to complete the work wasn't really an issue because um, I'm in the same school as Abinaya and we have the same system where these days it would be this, um, this subject. That wasn't really an issue, but it was mostly just different Zoom meetings at, um, at the same time or to figure out which ones would we would attend or not or where we would attend it at. How do you how do you make that determination over which one to choose? Do you choose your most favorite? Do you do you choose it based on a teacher, you, based on what you struggle with? What like what's your for anybody on the panel? What's your mechanism for choosing which Zoom to attend to or which subject area to attend to first? Um, most of them, it was really um, some of my teachers would like there's an op optional Zoom today for people who um, won't understand against. Um, my brother and my sister having uh, not optional Zoom. So it'll mostly be by that. Abanaya, you had your, your hand raised as well. Uh, yeah, I think that 
I personally choose it by like which subject I don't want to get done because then once you have it done it's kind of like a relief because then you can kind of look forward to doing the ones you actually want to do because for me right now in a lot of my subjects we're actually doing things that we would do like towards the end of the year which are more fun so yeah and I think that like a challenge would like at first it was kind of hard to come up with a good schedule because it was like really new and we like didn't really know what we were doing if we were doing online school or not at all so it was like you don't want to like do it but you know you have to get the work done so you'll kind of just force yourself but now that it's been like a few weeks I think that's easier to like you have a schedule and you know what you're doing each day of the week so routine helps and getting those those annoying things done first kind of like me and making my bed making sure that I do that and then I can start the day it looks like Parker you have something to add uh, yeah, like for the work, when I do it, I normally like to do like the easy one and then a hard one and then an easy one, and then a hard one and an easy one, just so I can like trade off and I can do like um, the hard ones and I get a relief to do the easy ones and then I go back and finish up the hard ones. Interesting. Wendy, I don't know if you've heard this or not, but I was talking with a building principal yesterday and they were they were talking about the teachers and they were even thinking about looking at how students were submitting work and realizing that some students do want to do all their social work, social studies work at one time and complete that works assignment and then go to the next subject area and then go to the next subject area. So it's almost a, a unique thing that each learner is taking this in their own pathway to make that, that work. Have you heard anything parallel to that or conflicting to that, Wendy? No, not, no, not conflicting. You know, I, I think that, um, you know, there's just unique um, circumstances and challenges you know, for, um, for all of the districts out there and all the schools out there in terms of, you know, how they're approaching this. Tyler, did you um, have something? I think I saw you in the chat. Um, yes, it was about the, uh, how I get my work done. I was similar to uh, Abinaya where I just did like the hardest ones first. So I got those out of the way. And then near the end of the week, I only had the easy ones. So then it was like an easy end of the week. Great. So we had a question pop up from um, one of the attendees out there. So one of the principals that have tuned in and she is asking, I would like to know from the panelists how they have maintained social interaction with their peers during this time. So knowing that you can't see your friends um, in person, how have you been kind of keeping up socially with your, with your friends? Carly, you want to take that one? Um, well, for some of my friends, um, if they had phones, because um, a couple of them don't, I would, um, like, call them or FaceTime them. Um, and for a little while, um, we would set up, like, Google Meets for my friends who didn't have phones, or so it'd be easier to do, like, group meets. Um, but, like, right now, we're trying to find something different, because Google made it so students can't start meets. So um, we've been looking into doing, like, more Zooms, but that's kind of it. Okay. Well, that's a great... Great idea. How about you, Emerson? What have you been doing to keep up with your friends? Uh, me and my friends have been doing Google Hangout, and we've been doing some Netflix parties. So we just watch like a movie and we talk while we watch it. And that's really good. Yeah, that's really cool. How about you, Parker? Um, what me and my friends like to do, we either play on like Xbox together and play video games or we'll go on FaceTime and then we'll just talk and then we'll play like the card games, but like we'll play it over the thing. There's a, there's definitely a lot of different games you can play online, you know, and then kind of make it a group thing. That's a great idea. All right. So another question that um, somebody that's listening in asked is what questions do you have about the start of next school year? What are you hearing about next school year? And do you have any anxiety about that? So uh, Abinaya, your hand went up right away. So what are you thinking about that? So at our school, what we do is we have like a ton of different homerooms grade by grade that have to do with clubs. So we have like student council, mentors, we have something called Kindness Club. And um, last week the applications came out for those. and. I applied for eighth grade mentors and a lot of the questions revolved around um, adjusting because what the eighth grade mentors do is help the incoming sixth graders. So a lot of the 
questions were about how we could adjust the year for the incoming sixth graders if it was an online school. So I feel like a lot of people at our school have already had the idea that um, like some of our principals and teachers are already talking about doing online school in the fall. So yeah. Looks like Caden was ready to go as well. I'm sorry, Lynn. Um, for the most part, I'm worried that, you know, since I'm an eighth grader, next year will be my freshman year at the high school. And I'm worried that, like, this will still be a big issue then and we won't be able to go in person. Because I'm used to online online teaching right now, but, like, not being able to experience being in high school in person and only being able to do Zoom meetings and assignments online. I don't think I would, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of worried about that. How many of you are eighth graders? Do we have anybody who's in eighth grade? So, you know, obviously I think for those of you in eighth grade, it's probably a, a whole different thing because, you know, if we have to go online, you've probably been looking forward to going to high school and there's already probably some anxiety about going to high school in general. And yet starting the school year in a new school, might just be totally different if we're not able to go there in person. So have you thought about that or do you have any thoughts about that? Tyler, you want to share your thoughts about making that? I mean, I'm not that worried about it. I mean, yeah, I was excited to go to high school, but I mean, I don't know. I mean, it probably won't be that different for from what we're doing now if we have to continue online school. So, I mean, yeah, it would be a bummer that um, I wouldn't get to start high school yet, but hopefully we do. Do you think the work's going to be harder in high school? Do you have any anxiety about that? Um, I think a little bit. It might be a little bit harder, but not much. I'm not that worried about it. Oh, it's because you're, you're my nephew and you're smart. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. One of the questions over on that side panel to the panelists was, do you prefer remote learning or face-to-face? -face? So this would be remote learning. This would be face-to-face. -face. Can you show us with your thumb which one you'd prefer, remote learning or face-to-face? -face? Ooh. Even waking up at like 6 o'clock in the morning, you would rather wake up at 6 o'clock in the morning to go to school now than doing it face-to-face -face, or online? Interesting. What is it to, about the face-to-face -face you like more than the – the virtual or the online. Let's go Parker and then Abanaya and then David. I like to be able to see my friends and like talk to them. I think that's I why I went, that, I enjoy middle school too. <laughs> I just think that like the social interaction is kind of really important and like at our school, a lot of teachers have like really good bonds with kids. So it's like weird not being able to see them every day and talk to them like we used to. And like, and, cause in Zoom, there's not much privacy. Like if you say something like pretty much the whole class is gonna hear it. But our teachers can't like, they have offered to like set up private Zooms too, which is really nice. So yeah. Great. Thank you. David? I like face to face better because I feel like I get less distracted. I can get my work done easier than doing work at my home. So it sounds like you're all going to enjoy school more when you get to go back in that building. Nice. Any other thoughts before we move on to the next question? So, another question that to pose out to all of you is. Your districts and your teachers, your building administrators are all thinking about next year. If you had to do online learning again, what would you appreciate them or from them or what would they perhaps need to rethink going into next year to make sure that you're learning the way you, you would enjoy, um, you've got your friends, whatever it might be. Going into next year, what would they need to think? Let's do Carly, Emerson, and Caden, and then Wendy and I will jump in as, as needed. Go ahead. Okay. So um, I think my school at least isn't doing um, like daily Zooms, like they have office hours where you can go ask questions. Um, but I think if we had to do this next year, I would want like a class meeting that you could go to, but they could like record it. So if you missed it, you'd still be able to watch the class. Almost like the, the mini lesson or a focus lesson, they teach video and then 
have a chat session afterwards for anybody who needs uh, support in any way. Interesting. I like your idea too about recording and I think that makes a lot of sense. And, you know, I, I think it's not just that. Um, I, I think we just have to be mindful of what everyone's schedule is. Um, I think that maybe a lot of families have adjusted because this is kind of a short kind of emergency period of time. But in the fall, when everybody's parents have to go to work, I think there's, you know, and you have like maybe younger brothers and sisters that you have to take care of or chores that you have to do. I think recording it is going to make a lot of sense because your day might not be able to be, you know, the same all the time. So that's, that's a great suggestion. Emerson, you're on. Yeah, I agree with you, Carly, about how there's the office hours and how it's sometimes the office hours are at the same time for two teachers and you kind of have to choose between them. And I would, I would like if there were like schedule, like if all the teachers coordinated, so there were scheduled office hours so you wouldn't have to choose between them or there were like daily lessons that you could do just so that your week was a little bit more planned out. Yeah. Interesting. It almost sounds like all the math teachers have office hours at this time or on this day, all the science, even something like that of organizing it for, for the students. Caden? Um, I think for the most part that how my school is handling it is fine, but I feel like one thing that they would really need to work on next year is how it seems that this, this kind of came out of nowhere. Well, not really, but how it kind of surprised us. We didn't have a lot of time to plan. So I feel like if they, if they had like over the summer, the plan for and the schedule is what they need to do when work will be assigned. There'll be a lot of um, mess, or it won't be as messy for all of us. So if you all had one thing you would want your teachers to focus on over the summer for you, in preparation for next year, what would that one or two things be to make it easy to transition from class to class or to influence your learning? Um, I would say the schedule of when teachers have classes, just to make sure, because like, I know like we keep mentioning this, but like um, when classes, when two classes are at the same time. So a coordinated schedule. Sorry, Wendy, we were both on mute. Yeah, sorry. All right, who's got another suggestion that they would make? Tyler? I feel like more of like a schedule would be nice too because sometimes I get distracted and I just keep pushing my work off. But if I have like a certain like day of the week that I have to get that work done, I feel like it would make me get my work done faster and so you'd be a little more motivated if you had a schedule. That's good. Okay. Carly? Um, I would say I feel like it's a lot of worksheets right now. Like you read and answer the questions or like math. It's just like a math worksheet. And I think maybe finding a way to do something more interactive. Like I have no idea what they would do. But like something other than like just worksheets. That's a great suggestion. And, you know, as, as uh, Caden mentioned, teachers really didn't have a lot of preparation for the situation that they're in. And just like most of you weren't, weren't used to learning in an online environment, teachers aren't used to teaching in an online environment. And so I think that's a, a great point is that something teachers could do between now and the fall, if this has to continue, is really kind of learn some new skills for engaging students better online. Because there are a lot of different um, apps and tools that they can use to kind of, you know, include that engagement as part of what they're doing. But, you know, when they're just trying to uh, stay a couple days ahead of you in terms of creating lessons, I think that makes it challenging to also think about teaching strategies and methods. So I definitely, I, I'm sure a lot of teachers are kind of already thinking about that for next year. Who else has a suggestion? If there was something you could, if something teachers could do, what would it be? The, uh, for my teachers, because we use Schoology, so there's like multiple different things and sometimes it's in updates, not in the actual thing. So then sometimes some people like don't see it and then they end up not doing it because they can't find it. Okay. 
Oh, Steve, you're muted. <laughs> Over in the chat box, I don't know if you've seen these or not, but one to all of the panelists from your teachers is that the statement that they miss you probably more than you miss them or equally to it, that um, they're passionate about not only the content and the work, but they love interacting with you. The other one is from a building principle too around, um, thank you for sharing your perspectives because when we listen to your voices, we know how to plan forward with things. I mean, sometimes us as adults, I don't know about the other adults that are listening here, but I, I put it back to when I was in middle school or high school, which is a long time ago, um, or what I think is best and what students need, and that's not always the case. So thanks for that. There was one more in the Q&A from Mr. Powers around the average amount of time you spend as students with your online learning, and what do you think is reasonable? So how much time do you spend, and then what do you think is reasonable? Wendy, do you want to call on some people to share? Anaya, go ahead. What, what are you thinking? How much time are you spending and how much time do you think is fair per day? So what I try to do is I start, I try to still keep my schedule like doing it before three o'clock, like for us school ended at 2.30. So I try to like keep it before then. So it's not like completely different. And I don't, I don't think um, that we should be spending like all day doing our work because I still think it's important to get like physical activity and like rest and stuff. So I try to just keep it within the time that I would usually be doing at school if we were still in school. So would you say that you are, that what they're giving you is about that correct balance, like you're able to get it done? Okay. Who else? What, how much time are you spending now and how much time do you think is fair? Emerson? I'm spending about two hours on schoolwork every day, sometimes less, sometimes more. And I think that's probably a good amount. Maybe if there was a little bit more, we could learn more things so we would be ready for next year. But I think what we have now is pretty good. Okay, anyone else? How much time are you spending? Tyler? Yeah, I'm spending probably an average of two hours a day. But that's like um, not as much as we would be spending in a school day because like we just have the worksheets like probably there's a lot of time like wasted in between like classes and um, like the teacher taking attendance and everything so the time is obviously um, moved down from the time that we have to do our work so yeah it's faster and I think that's pretty reasonable good I thought I saw someone else raise their hand I think it was Kaden Okay, great, Caden. Um, how much time I spend is kind of, I can't really give an average or a certain amount because like I said, with the, our schedule, it's more Monday, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, like today. I didn't spend any time today because I didn't uh, get any emails or new assignments. But whenever I do get an assignment, I like to like get it done right away so I don't want to worry about it later. So a question I have for any of you would be something around, there's like, two or three weeks left in school. And I know myself well enough that I can get unmotivated pretty fast, especially when the weather gets nice outside. <laughs> How are you gonna keep yourselves motivated to continue learning for the next few weeks? Go ahead, Carly. Um, well, one of the things I like to do when it's really nice outside is I'll go and I'll do my schoolwork outside um, so that I'm like still outside and then um, it makes me want to do it faster and like not um, like save it for later so then I can enjoy the um, day. Let's do Abanaya and Tyler. Um, so for us, like our teachers are being like flexible so that even if you're not able to get an assignment done by like it's due date you can still turn it in late for credit so I think that it like helps me knowing that even if I'm not getting it done I still like if, if I'm not going to turn it by the due date I still have to get it done so I think that that just motivates me to make sure that I'm getting it done and it's even better to turn it in before it's too late so yeah so timelines are, are important not only for the teacher to give you timelines but to create timelines for yourselves so Tyler when you're ready oops I'm sorry Go ahead, go ahead and go on. 
I mean, so if it's really nice, I'll go and spend the day outside and just when it gets dark and I'm inside, then I'll do all my work. So I don't waste the day inside doing my work during the day. Well, and especially with the rain we've had, we have to take advantage of the nice days when we can be outside. So I totally get that. Um, how many of you have a sc- are going to a school that uses Schoolology as your platform? See, Tyler. Okay. So, um, oh, and Parker. Okay, great. So the, this question is for you. One of the principals is asking, um, if you're using Schoolology, is the setup of your teacher's um, Schoolology platform consistent um, in terms of design, accessing lessons? So when you go to, from class to class and look at each different teacher's page, is it set up consistently? And if it's not, would that help you if it was? Um, yeah, most of it is like set up in the same way, but then some of it is like in a whole different thing. Like there's updates within the actual thing. Sometimes people like post their like actual weekly thing and updates. So like the first week I didn't actually know that. So then sometimes I like forgot about a couple of assess uh, about a couple of things that we needed to do. But then every single other time I got the hang of it and. For me, um, pretty much every teacher like does it differently, but it's not that difficult and I've never had any problems finding their assignments or anything. Great. All right, so we had another question um, in the chat. What is your understanding of the grading that is taking place? And what is your report card gonna look like at the end of the year? Are you going to get credit, no credit? Are you going to get letter grades, complete and complete? What does that look like? So why don't we go uh, Carly, Emerson, Caden, and then Tyler. Um, well, my school is doing credit, no credit. So as long as you turn in the work, like it doesn't matter if you turned it all in the last week or um, if you're turning it in um, by the due date, as long as you turn it in, um, we're going to get credit, no credit at the end of the year. Great. Okay, Emerson. My school is doing um, it really as long as you were passing um, when all of this started, you're good for the rest of the year. And so it's encouraged that you do your work and you turn it in definitely, but it doesn't affect your grade. Okay. How about you, Caden? Um, for us, so pretty much we're doing credit no credit. And they want um oh if I say like um pretty much if we as long as we complete the assignment we're good and for most of them um like um for math we use IXL and our teacher can track how long we're on assignment so it shows that we're actually putting effort into it instead of just guessing randomly and getting the score we need but pretty much that's it okay how about you Tyler. Um, my school is also doing credit, no credit, but at the end of every week, we have like a quiz and it, as long as we get above 60% on the quiz, then we pass for the week and it goes by that. Oh, that's interesting. I haven't heard that approach. That's interesting. How about you, Parker? We also use credit, no credit. So as long as you do the work, it's fine. But some kids like still... Like, if you get a low enough grade, like a 40%, then it's, like, it won't count as credit. So you need to get, like, at least a 60. Okay. Abenaya? So we're also using credit no credit, but when we have quizzes, you have to get um, over a 60% for it to count as passing. But also, like, for my math teacher, what she's doing is, like, she'll revise your work. It, so it's not about, like, correction, but it's about completeness. But if you, like, don't complete something, you'll get, like, half credit or sometimes no credit. But usually it's pretty easy to get, like, full credit on the assignments. And then if you do something and then the teacher, like, they can ask you to, like, change it a little bit. So then we have revised for credit. So there's still ways that you can get credit even if you're like confused or like mess up on something. Oh, that's a great system. All right, David, how about you? Oh, you gotta unmute. Our, our, my school is doing, if you were passing at the beginning, then you're fine, but you still, you're, you're still encouraged to turn in their assignments. 
All right, Steve, I, Steve, did you have a chance to look in the question box? I yeah, think. I'm there right now. Great. So two questions that to pose to, to the panel here is, if your school was gonna ask for feedback from you, how would you suggest they get feedback from you to get your point of view? So how would they gather feedback from you? The other one that's kind of like that is, what would you want to know about the, the next school year or the up and coming school year? So one is what feedback, how would you give feedback? And then the second one is, what do you wanna know about the 2021 school year? It looks like Caden has his hand up. So Caden, whenever you're ready, go ahead. Um, for the feedback one, for some of my um, classes, we've just been given um, like little Google quizzes. I'm, I'm not sure what they're called. But like that, we can just like record or, or type in our answer and then they can just look over them. Abinad? Um, to add on what to Kaden said, I think he's talking about Google Forms because that's what my teacher used to. Um, I think so most of my teachers do one every two to three weeks and they'll just type in some basic questions to ask like how we think about what we think about like the workload, what's working, what's not. And then like based on that, they'll kind of change the format a little bit. So I think that's helpful. So the teacher, your teachers are actually asking you for input about what's working and what's not working. And then they're adjusting based on that. Anybody else having that experience or would appreciate it? Hey, let me ask you one more question and then we'll, we'll wrap up for today. So, um, I'm wondering if in addition to the work that you're doing, if during this time you've done any type of career exploration, has anybody's school integrated something with um, kind of a career exploration into what you've been doing during this time? Abinaya? Um, we have something called Makerspace at our school that um, our librarian is kind of putting together so we have like challenges they have like daily challenges and stuff that you can do and you can like submit it and then she puts it on like this website so like it's fun that like everyone can see each other's works and you can kind of like motivate each other perfect anyone else doing anything with career exploration go ahead parker um, our school isn't doing anything with career, but like they're kind of like making us so that like we can get into the things that we actually want to do. Like sometimes they gave us like Friday questions, like asking us what we want. That is like actually that's a, that's a great kind of follow up question to that. So have has your school been able to build in like student choice into your assignments so that maybe they give you some you know different options or is it pretty much here's your assignment for today? Anybody getting any choice? Tyler, can you tell us what that looks like? Um, for some assignments, like last week we had this um, social studies assignment where it was. You had to, um, we were learning about the wars within the Civil War, like the battles within the Civil War. And um, we had to like sum up one of the battles. We had our choice of one of the battles. And we could either do like a, a two to three paragraph summary. We could make a TikTok and um, two other things that I don't remember. But <laughs> <laughs> So I'm taking, did you pick doing the TikTok? No, I just did a two to three paragraph summary. All right. Okay, Abin, what about you? So um, for us, like you do get one assignment, but like for instance, my language arts teacher, we're doing poetry right now. So we have to do like a ton of different types of poems, but she's giving it to us to like let us like pick which one we want to do first. Like, so what order we want to do it in. But she also gave us all the tools so that like we know how to do each one. So it's like kind of up to you on like when you want to do them. I think that maybe is another important piece when we were talking earlier about like making things more engaging or more interesting. I think giving students choice maybe can make things more interesting too. So it can kind of be both. All right, anyone have any closing thought you want to share before we wrap up for today? Anyone? All right, we really appreciate you guys being part of the uh, panel today. I think it's really important that we get this student voice out there and that 
um, schools and principals all over the state kind of get a perspective of how students are feeling about this. And, you know, some of the closing thoughts, and maybe Steve can help me as I think about um, things that I heard a lot of you say, is that um, your preferred mode of learning is in person um, over remote. I definitely got that from you loud and clear. You miss the interaction with your peers, and you also miss the interaction with your uh, teachers, who many of you, you know, have really nice relationships with, and so you miss that. And um, another thing that I heard from you is that if teachers are going to be teaching online in the fall, you would like more consistency in terms of how they set up assignments, and that you'd like um, to be able to record um, instruction as it comes up so that you could either replay it or watch it when it's uh, a more convenient time. Um, what else did you hear, Steve? Did you get any other kind of common threads? You nailed it. Um, <laughs> also, the ideas of just as from the student perspective of how do you prioritize the, the work? How do you prioritize your time? Um, and, and you appreciate flexibility when things are due and how they're due and, and how to go about it. And even down to when you access your teachers for support. Right, exactly. So all good stuff. And we will make sure that we share this link with principals all over the state so they have an opportunity to watch this video and to be able to get the thoughts that you shared because I think it's a really valuable perspective. So all the principals who are still um, on, the, uh, on the webinar, a couple of upcoming announcements for you. Um, as I noticed or noted earlier, MASSP is willing to facilitate conversations like this, uh, which we would call listening sessions in your school district, whether that be with students, parents, teachers, and community members. And we have two Leader to Leaders coming up on May 26th. We'll be talking with Kim Marshall, who's the author of the Marshall Memo that all MASSP members get every week. He's gonna talk about some changes in the Marshall Memo in ways that you might best utilize it with staff. And then on June 4th, we're gonna have a panel just like this that we had today with students, but with superintendents from around the state. So we're really excited to be able to hear from uh, district superintendents, how they feel their remote learning plan has been going and what their plans are moving forward. So once again, thank you so much to all the panelists. We appreciate your time and we hope you have an awesome holiday weekend. Take care, everyone. Thanks, everyone. And to the parents that helped behind the scenes to get this all set up as well, and the, and the principals. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.